Hey guys, um, hope you're doing well today. Uh, wanted to uh, take a, a moment to give a huge thank you to Beth, uh, Happy Latter Day Saint. She uh, gave a shout out in, in her last video to me and several other YouTubers, and, and I really appreciate that. So thank you, Beth. I'm going to cut to the chase here and get to the, the, the purpose for this video. Um, so I, I came across a, an article that I really, really enjoyed reading uh, on the church's website that I'm going to post a link to um, in this, uh, in the description of this video. But, uh, you know, a, a lot of us feel like we're, we're alone in, in the uh, circumstances and the situations that we're in. And, uh, you know, it makes it hard when, when we have to make you know certain decisions in life or or we have to go through certain challenges or trials but uh you know we just we just need to um it just a, a good lesson for me um to to remember that uh you know it's okay to share our experiences in life um, so that others can maybe learn from our mistakes or, or the experiences that we've had and um so that uh, we can um all you know uh, come to the realization that we're not alone uh, and that there's other people that are are going through the same uh, struggles or challenges or having to make the same decisions in life did you know that Howard W Hunter was a drummer i'm sure you knew that he was a musician i did not know um, but I came across this article that uh, was just kind of a snippet um, of a an article that was written in 1985. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, myself real quick um, and, and relate it to this story of um, Howard W. Hunter. I uh, grew up in... Uh, in a family uh, of music lovers, my dad actually, uh, uh, and I'll have to include his uh, conversion story in one of my videos, um, just so you can kind of get to know me a little bit better. But uh, um, my my dad joined the church um, while he was in the music business um, in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, he grew up in Iowa. But uh, moved to Nashville when he auditioned um, to be a, a drummer for a show called Hee Haw. Welcome to Hee Haw, starring Buck Owens and Roy Clark. I wonder how many of you are familiar with that show. I, I grew up watching reruns of it, and um, you know, my dad he'll send clips to me on on Facebook uh, when when he comes across an episode that he's in, you know, playing the drums. Here's the latest one, which is it's just fascinating to watch. But um, so. Um, I had a, a love for music early on in my life and, and you know, just for years, you know, in in my adolescence and, you know, my youth and, and teenage years and even, you know, prior to and right after my mission, um, that was going to be my life. I was going to be a professional musician. And uh, there's a lot of uh, wonderful members of the church here in Nashville that, that have made that uh, work for them, that, you know, that have been able to uh, um, have successful careers and provide for their families um, as musicians. And, uh, you know, that's great. And, and I, would, I would love to do that. But um, when, I, when I got home from my mission, I uh, met my wife uh, at at a sing, young single adult activity. It was a, it was a dance. I didn't want to be there. She didn't want to be there. And we just happened to run into each other and and 
get to know each other while we were dancing to a song or two and you know the rest is history but um as we got to know each other uh better um you know i i let her know you know I, yeah this is what I, I plan on doing with my life i want to be a musician i want to be a professional drummer and um she let me know that um she did not want to uh be in a relationship with um somebody who was going to be on the road all the time leaving her to take care of the kids and you know everybody has their you know preference um you know and and there are couples and and families marriages that make that work that that lifestyle but as i got to thinking about that and reflecting on my experiences from my mission that i had just returned home from and as our dating became more serious i decided you know what if i want to pursue a serious relationship uh with this daughter of god then yeah i need to uh probably reconsider you know what my career choice is going to be and um, that that led me down the path of uh, construction going to school um, getting my associate's degree get my bachelor's degree in, in residential construction management and um, you know it's it's I've had a lot of experiences going down that road that have confirmed that you know this is God's plan for me and my family and I'm so grateful for that um, my dad ended up uh, leaving his career in music because <laughs> him and my mom had seven kids and it was becoming really challenging to take care of a family that size uh you know with you know uh, playing music and and being on the road all the time with that now i ended up going to school once i made that decision and um it it was uh pr the best thing that i ever did uh making that decision um you know and i I tell people that I'm a recovering musician. Yeah, I, I joke about that, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I still love music. I still have a passion for it. Uh, it's But it's 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 nice to be able to uh, play it and enjoy it and not stress over, um, you know, trying to make an income and provide for my family through music. You know, although you know, a lot of people say, you know, make, make your vocation your vacation. Uh, you you want to be able to enjoy what you do. And I, I do. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really creative. You know, outside of music, I, I love to build things. And, and um, I, I love numbers. And I want to get to um, this article real quick um, and uh, share it, some things that I thought were fascinating. Um this article says um, that this particular um, author, or it says he was a, a church news senior contributing editor. Um, he had interviewed uh, Elder Howard W. Hunter in 1985, and uh, he asked Elder Hunter to tell him about some of his interests beyond his church service. And so he said um, that elder hunter told him about his music career playing for dances and other activities as a volunteer and as a professional he ended that phase of his life in 1931 shortly after he married clara may jeffs he returned home from a musical gig wrapped his saxophone clarinet and violin in kimois and packed them away in boxes Except for a few special occasions and family gatherings, they had remained in storage. I asked him if he ever took out one of his instruments. He got up from his chair, went to a closet, and removed a black case. Inside his clarinet was nestled um, in a royal blue velvet. So, um, when, when he uh, put his instruments away... That was not like the anti-Nephi Lehi's. He did not make a covenant that he was never again going to touch those instruments. Uh, and uh, I'm sure his family appreciated that later. Uh, he continues, uh, he assembled the rosewood instrument, uh, fingered uh, its keys, 
which were stiff from years of disuse and tentatively uh, blew into its mouthpiece. The only sound that came out was air brushing against a hollow tube. It's been too long, he said. The reed has dried out. He tried again, continuing to puff into the instrument until he coaxed from it a sweet, mellow sound echoing past memories. Then, sitting on the end of a piano bench in his living room, he played snatches from several melodies that were favorite tunes from his days as a professional musician on a cruise ship to Asia um, and on a radio program in Los Angeles, California. I just decided I couldn't be a musician, he said of the night he packed away his musical instruments. I would have had to travel and play lots of nights. I didn't think marriage and life on the road would be a good combination for us. You know, and I, I agree with that. Like, that's ultimately what helped me to decide to um, pursue uh, a different career path because, you know, after serving a mission, you know, it became apparent to me how, how much I wanted a family and whatever career was going to be more um, conducive to that is the path I was going to take. And, 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 you know, I needed a career path that my wife would support. And so, you know, it became obvious to me at that point, the decision I needed to make. He became an attorney and businessman before he was sustained October 10th, 1959 to the Council of the Twelve Apostles. Although he left his music career, he retained a deep love for music. I still get the urge to play from time to time, he said, and my toes can't stay still when I hear an orchestra. He recalled being about six years old when he ventured into music. My mother thought it would be a good idea for me to study piano, he said. He grew to be six feet tall and had hands so large they easily could have spanned an octave and a half on the piano. In Boise, Idaho, where he grew up, he learned to play the violin marimba that he won in a contest and the drums. He formed a band, he switched to playing clarinet and saxophone for practical reasons. I got tired of hauling around big drum sets and marimbas every time we played. So I started playing something I could tuck under my arm, he said, giving out one of his characteristic full voice laughs. He explained that his job with the band was just another experience from which he earned money. He always had a job. As a youngster, he delivered magazines to homes and sold newspapers on street corners. I yelled out the headlines, he said. One he particularly remembered was on November 11, 1918, announcing the armistice of World War I. That was three days before he turned 11. Howard W. Hunter, along with four other young men, formed a band called Hunter's Crewnators. That group was formed after he graduated from Boise High School in 1926 and enrolled at the University of Washington in Seattle for a short time. He and his band auditioned for and were awarded a contract to perform aboard the SS President Jackson, a cruise ship making a five-month tour to Asia. They had a full, a full daily schedule playing light, popular music during the lunch hour, classical music during dinner, dance music in the ballroom, and theater music to accompany silent movies aboard the ship. When ashore, they played in hotels and dinner clubs in Tokyo, Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Manila. Elder Hunter recalled that when he later traveled with BYU's International Folk Dancers in 1984, which took them to China, he asked a guide if he had heard of the French club one of Shanghai's elite dining places. The guide said he had, and as a matter of fact, the club was still there. He took me by there, President Hunter said. It looked just like it did when my band played there. He said his love for music had taken him on a route leading to his greatest happiness, marriage to Clara Mae Jeffs, whom he met in Los Angeles at a Golden Green Ball. But when he met her, his days as a musician were numbered. 
Soon after their marriage, he decided to give up music. I hope you enjoyed me uh, going through the, that portion of um, Howard W. Hunter's life and, and um, hope you enjoyed me kind of walking through my experiences and, and uh, just having to make those decisions. You know, it's, that's what I love about, uh, um, you know, taking those examples from the scriptures and, and from the lives of the leaders of the church and, and applying, um, you know, what they've learned or what anybody has learned in life uh, to, to my experiences um, and, and my life so that I can improve and, and make better decisions moving forward. Um, you know, like I said earlier, um, you know, I, I love music. I still love music. Um, but, you know, uh, God has a plan for each of us and it's up to us to figure out what that plan is so that we can, uh, bring it to full realization and, and, uh, you know, have joy in this life. So, uh, I will catch you later. Y'all take care. Bye.